Hey everyone, and today I'll be walking you through how to set up ExpressVPN on your Mac. So if you're looking for a VPN that's simple to install, fast and reliable for things like streaming or just keeping your browsing private, you've definitely come to the right place. I'll cover exactly where to find the right download, how the setup works, and share a couple of quick tips to make the whole process as smooth as possible. And just a heads up, You'll find any current discount links and full reviews in the description if you want to check those out. Now the first thing you'll want to do is open up your browser and search for ExpressVPN download. Usually, the first result will take you right to their official site. If you don't have a subscription yet, just click Get ExpressVPN which will take you to the sign up page where you can pick a plan. Just be aware that the long term plans are usually the best value, and sometimes you'll find extra months free with the link in the description. If you're already a subscriber, you can just hit download VPN and you'll see a list of supported devices. Mac should already be highlighted, so you can just click download. Once the app's downloaded, open it up and go through the usual install prompts. You'll need to agree to a couple of terms and hit continue, and then you're all set to open the app for the first time. When you launch ExpressVPN, you'll see two options, one to sign in or another that says get ExpressVPN now. If you already have a subscription, go ahead and click sign in. This is where you'll enter your activation code. You can find that code in your email or by logging into your ExpressVPN account on their website. Just paste it in, hit continue, and you're ready to start using the app. So once you're signed in, the main screen is pretty straightforward. You'll see a big on button, just click that and ExpressVPN will connect you to the fastest server available for your location. Usually you'll be connected in under a second, so it's a really quick process. If you want to pick a specific country or server instead, just click the options icon up in the top left and then select VPN locations. Here you can search by country or just scroll through the list. When you see the location you want, just double click it and you'll switch over right away. ExpressVPN has over 3,000 servers in 100 in five countries, so you're covered pretty much anywhere you need. That means you can access global content, including things like Netflix, Hulu, and HBO Max, and the app is very reliable when it comes to accessing those streaming platforms. So if you're looking to watch White Lotus on HBO Max, but you're outside of the US, you can use the VPN to change your location to a US server, log into your Max account, and then you should be able to watch the show easily. And if you've ever run into VPNs that struggle with streaming, you'll appreciate that ExpressVPN uses obfuscated servers to help you get around tougher restrictions, which makes a big difference for streaming performance. Now, another thing I noticed is just how fluid and responsive the app feels on Mac. Even compared to other VPNs, ExpressVPN is really fast. Recent independent tests show only about an 8% drop in speed on Mac when using the lightweight protocol. So performance-wise, it's definitely at the top of the list. By default, everything's pre-configured for the best mix of speed and security, so you really don't need to change any settings unless you want to. But if you do want to dig in a bit, you'll find the protocol settings in the menu. Here, the recommended option is to use Lightway UDP for the best speeds, and it's worth noting that Lightway's now been rewritten in Rust, so it's even more secure and reliable. You can also leave it on Auto if you'd rather let ExpressVPN pick the best protocol for your connection. In the general settings, you'll find a couple of handy options. The first one is called Network Lock, which is basically a kill switch. This means that if your VPN connection drops unexpectedly, your internet is immediately cut off, so there's no risk of your data leaking to your ISP or anyone else. It's a great feature for anyone who's serious about privacy. Another helpful option is split tunneling. This lets you decide which apps use the VPN connection and which use your normal internet. For example, you might want only your torrenting app to go through the VPN while everything else stays on your regular connection. It's simple to set up, just go into settings, select only allow selected apps to use the VPN and pick the apps you want. But just a heads up, split tunneling isn't available on Mac with Mac OS 11 or newer, which is an Apple limitation, but you will find it on Windows and some other platforms. And if you have a lot of devices to cover, ExpressVPN lets you connect up to eight at once with a single subscription, which is a huge plus if you want to stay protected across your laptop, phone, tablet, and more. Moving over to the advanced protection menu, ExpressVPN includes some extra tools that are already enabled by default. You've got an ad blocker, a pop-up blocker, and tracker blocking, plus the option to block all adult sites if you want parental controls. What's nice is that these protections work at the DNS level, so they apply to your entire device and help keep things like trackers and malicious sites out even before they load. And as for the overall app experience, it really is as simple and beginner-friendly as it gets. There aren't any complicated options to worry about, and everything just feels intuitive, with the interface matching the seamless Mac experience really well. Now, as of 2025, ExpressVPN continues to be one of the most audited and independently verified VPNs out there, 
and it's consistently recognized for privacy and performance reliability. If you're after a VPN that's easy to use, keeps you protected, and doesn't slow you down, it's still one of the best options around. So if you want to check the latest pricing, discounts, or get a more in-depth review, you'll find those linked in the description below. If you found this guide helpful, please leave a thumbs up as I always appreciate that. And if you have any questions or want to see a comparison with other VPNs, feel free to leave a comment down below as I love getting to answer as many of those as I can. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.